And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day five of this program, we say be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, we thank you for what you have done in the past days. We thank you, Lord, for this day of grace. Lord God Almighty, may your grace manifest in our lives tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we look unto you for power, Jehovah, let your power be released upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We have been looking at the Holy Spirit and power. So we have been looking at power and we have defined power as the capacity or the ability to do something, to act in a way or to influence events or influence other people. And this morning, we started by looking at some dimensions of God's power, that is, what, in what way does the, uh, the power of God work? The first one was that we saw that the power of God has a creative ability. The power of God has what we call creative ability. The power of God can create. And we saw that through the pages of the scriptures that God created. So, the second thing we look at in the morning was that the power of God has a restorative ability. It can restore. The power of God can restore. We saw uh, in some scriptural passages how the power of God brought back dead lives, dead situations. And I am praying for somebody in the name that is above every other name, the power of God shall work wonders for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But before we go on this evening, there was an assignment the Lord gave me in the morning, which time did not permit us to look into. And that assignment was that as I was praying early this morning, the Lord sent me to speak a word of grace into the life of somebody. To speak a word of grace into Amen. the life of somebody. Amen. You are hearing me, you are watching. The grace of God shall locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And suddenly I discovered that today is the fifth day and five is a number of grace. Amen. So, let me just quickly deliver this into the life of somebody. Grace of God. The grace of God for your information is not earned by works. You don't earn the grace of God. You don't deserve the grace of God because you work for it. That is the first thing you need to know about the grace of God. Number two is that the grace of God means unmerited favor. Something you get, not because you qualify for it. Something you receive, not because you want it. Something you get, or something that happens that comes your way, not because you worked for it. Not because you passed the exam. Not because you are able to read for it. Not because you work for it. Amen. So the grace is unmerited favor, not because you work for it, not because you deserve it. You don't get it by connection. The grace of God. The grace of God helps you to achieve what you ordinarily will never be able to achieve. The grace of God makes you to become who you never will have been able to be based on your certificate based on your CV, based on your effort, based on your connections. No. The grace of God. 
And that is why I am sent to speak the word of grace into somebody. As the Lord lived before whom we are, beginning from now, may the grace of God begin to speak for you. Amen. May the grace of God begin to speak for you. Amen. The unmerited favor of God begins to speak for you. Amen. In the name that is above every other name. Amen. May the grace of God deliver unto you. Amen. That which you could not have been able to get by yourself. Amen. That place you could never have been able to get by yourself. Amen. I command that the grace of God will release upon you. Amen. I send the word of grace into your life. Amen. I send the word of grace into your family. Amen. I send the word of grace into the lives of your children. Amen. I send the word of grace into your health. Amen. I send the word of grace into your body. Amen. I send the word of grace into your business. Amen. I send the word of grace into your career. Amen. I send the word of grace into your job. Amen. As from today, may you become an embodiment of God's grace Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The grace of God shall speak for you. Amen. It shall speak for your family. Amen. It shall speak for your children. Amen. The grace of God shall work for you. Amen. Men will see you, they will say, this is the grace. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where you have struggled, where you have toiled, where you have been struggling, I command today, let grace take over. Amen. Let grace take over. Amen. Every difficult situation, let the grace of God begin to speak. Amen. In every way you have been hooked, the grace of God will bring you out. Amen. In every way you have been hooked in life, in every way the journey of life has become difficult, as the Lord lived before whom we are, I send the word of grace to you today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In your weakness, let grace speak for you. Amen. In your inability, let the grace of God speak for you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. That Amen. was the message. The Lord asked me to send into the life of somebody today, the day fifth of the day five of our week of power. The Lord bless you, be seated. So, Amen. we have been looking at the dimensions of God's power. So, the power of God can create. The power of God can create. Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, all that God did was done by his power. Secondly, in the morning, we look at the restorative power uh, of, of God, the ability of the power of God to bring restoration, the restorative dimension of the power of God. And I am praying for somebody, whatever you might have lost, because grace has spoken for you today, receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There is somebody you are hearing me. There is somebody you are watching me. Suddenly of recent, your, your, your sense of taste disappear. Anything you put in your mouth, you can't feel the taste again. I pray today, let there be restoration. Amen. I pray, let there be restoration. 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 Somebody you are hearing me of recent, it like it's like strength is beginning to go. You have become very weak. I pray to gain, receive restoration of your strength. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Receive restoration. Amen. Receive restoration. Amen. Somebody you are hearing me. In the last couple of days, you have been down. And what happened? You sat down, you look at your life, and you flash back and you saw what you have missed in life. You looked at your, you know, you remember the opportunity you have missed. You remember what you have lost. The Lord said, I should tell you. Today, because grace has spoken for you, there shall be restoration. Amen. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So this.
these were the two dimensions of the power of God we looked at in the morning. Number three dimension of the power of God is that the power of God can protect. So there is the protective dimension of the power of God. The protective dimension of the power of God. The power of God specializes in protecting, in protecting us. The power of God brings protection. Hallelujah. When it comes to protection, for your information, there is only one protection. Every other one, they are fake. And that is what they call divine protection. And that is why Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 1. The Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. And what did he say? Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked but in vain. So there is only one protection. Isaiah 59 verse 19b. Isaiah 59, 19b. The Bible says, when the enemies shall come like a flood, the Holy Spirit will raise a standard against them. I pray for somebody that the Spirit of God will raise a standard against Amen. every attack of the death, Amen. against every attack of darkness. Amen. The Spirit of God will raise a standard. Amen. The, priest, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. Amen. What does it mean to raise a standard? To raise a standard means to bring something higher. Hallelujah. To bring something higher. Meaning that anytime they come against you, you will be higher than they are. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am praying for somebody. The spirit of God will raise a standard Amen. against every walk of darkness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The power of God has a protective ability. The power of God insulates. The power of God protects. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord has promised to protect you and I. And that is why in Exodus 13 verse 21, Exodus 13, 21, when he took the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, he was taking them to their promised land. The Bible says the Lord went before them by the day in the pillar of cloud to lead them the way. And what did he do? And by night, by the pillar of fire, to give them light to go by day and by night. So God made a 24-hour all-round protection. By the day, there was the pillar of cloud. And I told us that the pillar of cloud was important in the day, not only to guide them, but to shield them from the scorching sun. So that is in the, in the night, it led them by the pillar of fire. The pillar of fire was not only guiding them, was not only protecting them, but the pillar, the pillar of fire was, you know, was all around them to give them warm because of the cold in the night. So God's power has a protective ability. And that is why once the power of God is upon you, you have nothing to fear. In John chapter 7, Verse 25 to 30. I want us to look at that in the good news. We are looking at the protective ability and the protective capacity of the power of God. In John chapter 7 from verse 25. Look at this story that happened to Jesus. Some of the people of Jerusalem said, Isn't this the man the authorities are trying to kill? Is he not the man they want to kill? Verse 25. Look, he is talking in public and they say nothing against him. Can it be that they really know that he is the Messiah? Now, hold on there. Praise the Lord. So, there was a feast at Jerusalem. And then, people, everybody will have, will have to go and everything. And the brothers of Jesus, they came to him. They said, oh boy, this feast is a, you know, it's an annual thing. All of us are going. Remember, they are looking for you to kill you. So, if you like yourself, don't go. Jesus said, no problem. Leave that one to me. And... They went in midway through the celebration, through the, the festive, the, the, you know, the, 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 the festivity, Jesus suddenly appeared. And some people among the, among, you know, some people of Jerusalem said, is he not the man that the authorities are trying to kill? Is he not the man they are looking for to kill? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they were, taught, they were saying this, verse 25 and 26 again. Some of the people of Jerusalem said, isn't this the man? The authorities are trying to kill. Verse 26. Look, he is talking in public. And they say nothing against him. 
Can it be that they really know that he's the Messiah? So the people could not understand that this is, this, this is the man, the authority, they have announced that anybody, anywhere you see Jesus, arrest him. This is the Jesus talking publicly. And the people said, this one is showing, there is something in the life of this man that is making him untouchable. Hallelujah. Could it be that this is the Messiah? I am praying for somebody. The power of God will fall upon you. Amen. And you will become untouchable. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So they said, is it not the Messiah? Let's read on verse 27. But when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he's from. And we all know where this man comes from. So there was a debate. As Jesus taught in the temple, he said in a loud voice, do you really know me and know where I am from? That is the man they are looking for. They have, they have declared wanted in the public. I have not come on my own authority. He who sent me, however, is what? Is truthful. You do not know him. Somebody they are looking for. Instead of him to go and hide. And say, don't let them see me. He came out publicly. Carried microphone. He began to blast them. Hallelujah. Verse 29. But I know him. Because I come from him and he sent me. Verse 30. What did they do? Then they tried to seize him. But what? But no one laid a hand on him. Why? Because his hour has not yet come. I am praying for somebody. Nobody will touch you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not go before your hour. Amen. You will fulfill your base. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The meaning of that is that no premature death is, is permitted in your life. Amen. No premature death is permitted in your family. Amen. Jesus was there in the public. And nobody, nobody could raise a hand. Why? His time has not come. I am praying for somebody hearing me. As the Lord lived before whom we are, nothing will take you away before your time. Amen. I say nothing will take you away before your time. Amen. They declared him wanted publicly. Everybody knew they were looking for him, but nobody could touch him. Why? Power. Somebody say power. Power. Somebody lift up your hand. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Your power that no man can harass. Your power that, that no man can Let him fall upon my life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masapra Kassandara Babalibre Sandariha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Makata Yambra de Bobosco Proligaya. In the Debros. La Sombra Liga de Makande de Debros. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masatala Baba. Your power that no man can harass. Let it fall upon me today. Let it fall upon me today. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, your power that no man can harass, I receive upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Beloved, the world we are in, number one, is a wicked world. The world we are in, number two, is a dangerous world. It's a very, very dangerous world. Is a world full of trouble. It's a world full, you know, filled with afflictions. And that is why you need the power of God if you must navigate through this world. And Jesus carried power. So whether in the secret, whether in the open, no man could touch him. I am praying for you today in the name that is above every other name. By the power of God upon your life. No man shall touch you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In John chapter 18, when his time had fully come, when he had lived, he had fulfilled his purpose on earth, it was time for him to go. In John chapter 18 from verse 3 to 6, even when his time had come, he was unharassable. Hallelujah. 
Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from, uh, having received, John chapter 18, we are reading from verse 3. Do we have the good news? Praise the Lord. Amen. So Judas went to the garden, taking with him a group of Roman soldiers and some temple guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they were armed and carried lanterns and torches. They were armed. Amen. Group of soldiers armed. They were going to arrest a man who was not even carrying ordinary knife. The next verse, verse 4. Jesus knew everything that was going to happen. By the power of God, when the power of God rests upon you, you know before time. So he stepped forward and asked them, who is it you are looking for? Now, Jesus was among his disciples. You know, he dressed in such a way that you could hardly know that this is the leader, this is the boss. So everybody almost looked alike. And when Jesus saw them coming, instead of him to retreat, instead of him to step aside, instead of him to run away, all Jesus did was to walk towards them and he asked them, who are you people looking for? Beloved, the next thing that happened surprised me. Look at the next verse. So, verse 5, they said, Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. And he said, I am what? I am he. He said, Judas, the traitor, was standing with them. So, Jesus said, I am he. Please, the moment Jesus said that I am he, look at verse 6. When Jesus said to them, I am he, what did he do? They moved back and they fell to the ground. He didn't push them. He didn't do anything. He just stepped forward and said, I am he. And they started falling. Somebody say power. power. I am praying for somebody. Power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As from today, may the power of God begin to protect you. Amen. May the power of God begin to protect you. Amen. I am praying for you today. The anointing that cannot be harassed. The power that cannot be disgraced. Let it fall upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I read a story about that wonderful man of God, Apostle Ayo Babalola. He was in a prayer retreat one day uh, in a place called uh, Ido Ajinare. He was in that place on the prayer retreat and Baba was kneeling down and was praying. He was kneeling down. Later, then he laid, he laid down. He was just praying. He was praying. All of a sudden, he heard some sound around him, like something moving. He wanted to open his eyes. God said, no, don't open your eyes. Continue with your prayer. And Baba kept praying. He kept praying. After a while, God said to him, you can open your eyes now. And when he opened his eyes, there was a big and long python that was trying to cross his legs. And beloved, when he looked at the python, the python had been roasted by fire. Amen. Coals of fire in him. Amen. Rise up on your feet. You are going to pray. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Turn me to a coal of fire. Turn me to a coal of fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Turn me to a coal of fire. Make me fire. Turn me to a coal of fire. Make me fire. Masala tambro kodoske In the mighty name of Jesus. My father, my God. Turn me, oh Lord, into a coal of fire. Into a coal of fire. Masopra kata yambra le le le. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masopra taka yababa le ha. In the le 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 bush. Turn me, O Lord, into a coal of fire. Turn me, O Lord, into a coal of fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masopra kata yanda la babali ha. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. There are different. There are different ways people protect themselves. Some people use what we call local insurance. Amen. Amen. One man, many years ago, he was driving this long commercial vehicle. Uh, I think of one, one of the one they call Ovan bus, that 18 seater bus. And the man had done some charms. Anytime he was driving, you know, 
it, it moves anyhow. It just speeds, it overtakes and everything. Because once an accident happens, the next thing you will see, the man will disappear from the vehicle. And then it will, you, 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 you will see him at the other end. There was a day, he carried passengers from Ibadan and got into a place called Iwo on the express. As he was driving, pa, 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 he ran the vehicle under a trailer. 18 passengers, including his bus conductor, died. And when people rushed there, ah, what happened? They saw the man. He was walking towards the scene of the accident from the other side. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so that thing they call Igbe had carried him from the vehicle and taken him to the other side. Beloved, he wasted those lives. He got another vehicle. He began to drive. The next time an accident will happen, when his charm carried him, unfortunately, this one happened towards 7.38 p.m. in the night. When the charm carried him, the thing went and hung him on one very tall palm tree. On top of palm tree. So, it was a matter of choice. You didn't want to die by accident, but you will die by falling. And it was not there like that. They will say, you know, there is no ladder you can go and put on top of a tall palm tree. He was there. Unfortunately, the charm carried him and put him halfway, one side here, one side here. And all the thorns of the palm tree were just choking him before daybreak, he had died. Whether by accident, somehow, somehow, the end result was death. That is the power of the world. But when the power of God is protecting you, beloved, it is sure. I shared with us before, one man who went to buy parrots and put parrots, put the, the cage of the parrot by the entrance of his door. Amen. Amen. And anybody, you know, parrots can talk. So once he came back to the house, the parrot will start talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one came here. This one came here. He was very happy. One day, thieves came and they robbed, they robbed his house. They burgled his house. They carried everything away. And when he came back, the parrots began to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John came. This one came. They came with white bells. This and that and that. So he just took the information to the police and they caught the, the thieves. Caught them. All of them. He recovered everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the parrot gave him all the information. Beloved, the next time the thieves came, interestingly, the first thing they stole was the parrot. Uh -uh. So they took away the parrot and stole the things. By the time he came back, there was no parrot to tell him who came. But when the God of heaven, Jehovah himself, is protecting you, you are sure 24-7 that all is well. Amen. I am praying for somebody in the name that is above every other name. The power of God will protect you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A man of God was sharing with us some times ago about one man who was traveling. And then the boss had a step over somewhere. And this brother came out, went to ease himself. Before he could be back, another person went and took his seat. And when he came back, he said, but excuse me, I was the one sitting by the window side here. So what happened? So he tried to drag it. The man said, no. Um, they are, uh, did they write your name there? Anybody can be anywhere, this and that. And as the brother was dragging, the Holy Spirit told him, son, be, be, be calm. So he kept quiet, carried his bag, went and sat in another place. Beloved, it was not long. A trailer ran into the bus by the exact spot where that, that brother was sitting before that another person went and chased him through and cleared the, the, that spot and the man there died instantaneously. I am praying for somebody in the name that is above every other name. Sir. May the power of God protect you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the power of God protect you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The fourth dimension of the power of God is the one we call the destructive dimension. Mm. The power of God works much more than atomic bomb can destroy. The Bible says, God said, I am a consuming fire. 
The Bible talks about God that our God is a consuming, is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is that destructive dimension of the power of God. Let's look at First John chapter three, verse eight. John, 1 John 3, verse 8. 1 John 3, 8. 1 John chapter 3. Look at what the Bible says in verse 8. 1 John 3, 8. He that committed sin. That is 1 John 3, 8 now. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from where? From the beginning. For this purpose, let's look at the next statement together. For this what? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That what? That he might destroy the works of the devil. So, the Son of God was manifested for the purpose of destroying the works of the devil. I am praying for somebody hearing me. Every work of the devil in your life, every work of the devil in your health, every work of the devil in your family is destroyed today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look at the message version. The first John 3, verse 8. The message version. First John chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says, Those who make a practice of sin are straight from the devil. The pioneer of the practice of sin. But the Bible says the son of God entered the sin to abolish the devil's way. The son of God entered the sin. That is the message version of 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible says Jesus came into the sin. He appeared on the sin to what? To destroy the works of the devil. So he manifested as the destroyer of the works of the devil. I am praying for somebody. Whatever the devil has done in your life. Whatever the devil, devil has done in your family. In the name that is above every other name. I speak destruction unto it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak destruction upon it. Amen. I speak destruction upon Amen. it. I speak destruction upon Amen. it. I speak destruction upon Amen. it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mark 11, 12 to 14. Mark chapter 11. 12 to 14. The power of God has a destructive ability. It can destroy. Mark 11 from verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Verse 13. And seeing a fig tree where afar off having leaves, he came. If I play, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. Look at verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it, he spoke to the fig tree. He spoke unto it. What did he say? No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. At that point, the disciples were like, this Jesus said, he is wasting his time. What? We are here. If you want to talk, talk to us. This one that you are, you are getting angry at the fig tree. You don't have to be angry. Amen. Amen. But look at the next verse. Verse 20. Verse 20. Mark 11. Let's go to verse 20, please. 20 to 23. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree, what? Dried up from the root. Beloved, <laughs> the tree dried up from the root. And what happened? Verse 21. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou caused is withered away. This fig tree. Jesus, how did you do it? The, you caused this fig tree yesterday. And in less than 24 hours, the fig has withered. How did you do it? And Jesus answering said unto them, 
have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto what? Unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. Amen. Beloved, Jesus spoke destruction into that unprofitable tree. In the name that is above every other name, I speak destruction unto every unprofitable tree in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every unprofitable tree in your health, I speak destruction unto them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know why Jesus was angry? That fig tree was literally mocking Jesus. Mm. It was mocking Jesus. Why? Number one, why will the fig tree carry plenty leaves when the time for the fig to, to, you know, to produce has not come? The leaves come, and then, you know, the leaves come because there are fruit on it. This fig tree did not have fruit, but it only carried what? Leaves, and there was no single fruit. Secondly, second thing that we, we could see here was that the fig tree saw, now Jesus was the first person to have seen that. The Bible says he saw and seen a fig tree. Seen a fig tree. He saw it from a distance. According to Mark eleven thirteen, from the Good News Version, he saw the fig tree from the distance. And that fig tree, and he saw in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves. So he went to see it see if he could find any fig on it. But he came to it. He found only leaves. Why? Because it was not the right time for figs. Now, number three way that the fig tree was mocking Jesus was that the time for fig has not come. Why did he have to manifest at that point? And Jesus looked at it and cursed the fig tree and said, as from today, as I live and as my God lives, no man will eat of you again. And Jesus closed the chapter. 20, within less than 24 hours, the following morning, they saw that the fig tree had withered. I don't know what is it in your life that is mocking you. Beloved, sickness is a mocker. Affliction is a mocker. Delay is a mocker. Shame is a mocker. I am praying for somebody. Anything in your life that has been mocking you and mocking your God. I speak destruction upon it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet. You are going to pray. Jesus did not, he didn't negotiate with the fig tree. Don't negotiate with any unprofitable tree in your life. Anything that is not of God in your life, anything that is unproductive in your life is a fig tree. And all that fig tree is doing is to mock you. Sickness is a fig tree. It's mocking you. Ah, you are going to pray with only anger. Say, I command. I command. Every unprofitable tree. Every unprofitable tree. In the garden of my destiny. In the garden of my destiny. Catch fire. Catch fire. In the mighty name in of Jesus. Masa prokata zambrani da boshkere neboho. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Command them to catch fire. Command them to catch fire. Every unprofitable tree. Le kapa masa tali kadara boshkere neboho. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Umbra kapa skondre neboho. Raga da 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 ba ba le brohan da broka sandaria. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masa tala braga da. I command in the name of Jesus every unprofitable tree in the garden of my destiny I command you to die catch fire wither. in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen Beloved anything that will hinder your progress in life you must speak destruction unto it in Acts chapter 13 verse 6 to 12 Acts chapter 13 let's look at something from verse 6 to to 12. God, Apostle Paul, had wasted time. He has spent a lot, a long time serving the devil. Opportunity has now come for him to serve God. Apostle Paul decided to spend the whole of his time in serving God. And God was helping him. One day, somebody wanted to be a hindrance to his, his ministerial work. The Bible says, 
And when they had gone through the isles unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer. Beloved, they are all around. They are in your offices. They are in your place of work. They are in your neighborhood. For your information, they are in your families. We have them all around. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whose name was what? Bar Jesus. Now you can see that Jesus is there in his name to deceive people. Verse 7. Amen. Amen. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who what? Who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. The vice president of the country sent for Paul and Barnabas. Come and talk to me about the word of God. That is not common. People don't, people, it, it is very rare that people will call pastor. Please, pastor, come and teach me the Bible. It is common, pastor, pray for me. It is common. But this, this, this vice president, this deputy, deputy, as he was referred to, sent for Paul and Barnabas. And they came to the presidential house with their Bibles, ready to preach to the vice president. Amen. No wonder the Bible called him a prudent man. And look at what happened in verse 8 quickly. But Elimas the sorcerer. <laughs> verse 8. But Elimas the sorcerer. For so is his name by interpretation. Which stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Verse 9. Then Saul who also is called Paul, filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. Set his eyes on him. Beloved, there is power in eye contact. Verse 10. And said, on, and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, Will thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And look at what happened in verse 11. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And when? And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the way. And look at the result in verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beloved, quite interesting. Paul looked at this man and said, the hand of God is upon you. I decree, you will not see for a season. And when I look at that, I say, so Paul, why will you say not see for a season? I trust myself. I will, I, I, <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know what some of us have seen in the hand of the devil, when we see opportunity to deal with the enemy like this, we don't take it, we don't take it lightly. Be blind for a season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And after that, thank God, Paul did not have to preach anything again. Everything that happened, the way once Paul spoke that you will not see for a season, the man suddenly went blind. He was looking for somebody. The, 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 the deputy said, Sergius Paulus said, as a matter of fact, praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord. There is no sermon again. This is the sermon. We, you have preached the sermon. I am praying for somebody. Let the power of God rest upon you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I say let the power of God rest upon somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet. You are going to pray. Say, I command. I command. Any power hindering my progress. Any power hindering my progress. Receive divine destruction. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Masoproli da la baba regere mo sandaria. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. By the power of God. Masali kaplan da la baba skombreli ha. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Jesus look at the fig tree. Said no man eat of you again forever. Mm. 
and that tree died from up to the root. It died. I want you to pray for yourself. What any unprofitable tree in my body, perhaps you dream and sometimes you see something moving in your body. Perhaps there is an arrow in your body. Perhaps there is an ailment in your body. You will pray. Rise up on your feet if you can. Wherever you are, I want you to pray. Say, I command destruction. I command destruction. Upon every satanic plantation. In my life and family. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Maso prakataliraba. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. I command destruction into any satanic plantation in my life, in my family, in my body. Command fire. Maso prakatalandraleba. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Some few years ago, uh, those of you who perhaps were at the moment of solution that day will remember. One sister inside this Apollo settlement, she used to attend our programs all the time. She comes around and comes around and comes around. But all of a sudden, for a while, about one, two, three weeks, we didn't see this sister. So one day, I called her. I said, sister, so, so, and so, how, what happened? We have not seen you for a while. She said, oh, daddy, it's my period. I said, excuse me. I don't understand. I'm not saying we didn't see you yesterday. I'm not saying we didn't see you day before yesterday. It is three weeks now that we saw you. What happened? She said, ah, that is it, my period. I said, excuse me. Which period? Is this school period? The one we say first period, second period in school, or which period? She said, my monthly period. I said, excuse me. Monthly period kept you away for three weeks. And you are calling that one period. That one has past period. I said, okay, can you find time and come? She came. And she narrated, she said, every time her period came, that was the problem. That sometimes it will knock her down. I say, what? Period that some people will be doing, and they'll be doing exercise and running up and down. Is the one knocking you down? I said, the devil is a liar. And I gave her one of our books, This Wickedness Must End. Amen. Amen. And I said, there is something wrong in this matter. This is not ordinary. You cannot be having your period. And then you will now be at home for three, for three weeks. So that means in a month, it is only one week that will be useful for you. That is time waster. Amen. Amen. Okay, that is the book. This wickedness must end. That is, that is the book I told her to pick. This wickedness must end. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So she picked this book and I told her, use this book, pray for three nights. Do three night vigil with this book. Beloved, and she took the book. This book has over 360 prayer points in it. Over 360 prayer points. And she prayed the first night. Beloved, she prayed the second night. She prayed the third night. When she finished the third night, by around 3.30 or thereabouts, she went to sleep. Beloved, by 6 o'clock, she was living in this zone B, zone B in this estate here. Six o'clock the following morning, she said, let me go and ease myself. Beloved, as she entered the restroom, the next thing that happened was that a live wall gecko jumped out of her body, jumped out of her with blood. She screamed and called her sister. That one came. They saw the wall gecko live. That was what came out of her body. Amen. The best she could do was to snap it and video it, and she brought it and showed me. She shared a testimony in our Thursday deliverance service. She said, Daddy, this is it. Since that day, a period has been normal. Amen. The question number one is, how did life world get go entered into somebody's body? And the thing didn't die. It was there. So, the witchcraft plantation in her body was the one that was causing unnecessary unnecessary delay or whatever kind of a thing. Somebody, you are going to pray. Through the prayers she prayed, through the vigil, she was speaking destruction into anything God has not planted in her body. I want you to, wherever you are, you are going to pray. Say, I command. I command. Hey. Every satanic plantation in my every life. Satanic every plantation every satanic plantation in my body. Jump out by fire. In the name 
name of Jesus. Jump out by fire. 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 Pray, 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 pray. Jump out by fire. Masala Tangra Hida Bashanda. Jump out by fire. 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 In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Stretch your hands. I want to pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the power that is above every other power. By the name that is above every other name. Anything that God has not created with you that has found itself into your life, I command destruction upon it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Any satanic power that has been standing on your way of progress, as the Lord lived before whom we are, let that power die in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I command the destructive power of God. Upon every unprofitable victory, anything mocking you, anything mocking your God, anything mocking your health, anything mocking your marriage, anything mocking your business, anything mocking your finances, anything mocking your children, I command war upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for you. Whatever is it that has died in your life, anything that has died in your body, Anything that has died in your business, anything that has died in your marriage, anything that has died in your finances, in the name that is above every other name, by the power of him that brought Jesus from the dead to the living, I command them to come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody is not hearing me. There has been this terrible toothache that has been that you have been battling with right here where you are. I send the power of God to locate you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak woe unto that diabetes in your body. Amen. I command it to die. Amen. I command it to die. Amen. Every satanic waste pain. As the Lord lived before who we are, let the power of God scatter it Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, somebody, you are hearing me. You have been dealing with this terrible migraine for a while. As the Lord lived before whom we are, let the power of God locate you for healing. Amen. Let the power of God locate you for Amen. deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody, you have been bound by the spirit of fear. Of recent, everything around you has been fear. Fear. I rebuke that power of fear over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let the power that no man can harass. Let the anointing that no man can humiliate. Let it fall upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it fall upon your life. 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 Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That turbulence that is blowing against your marriage. Jesus spoke against that evil wind in Mark chapter 4. He said, peace be still. I speak peace upon that Amen. home. I speak Amen. peace upon that marriage. Amen. I speak peace upon that home. Amen. I speak peace upon that marriage. Amen. I speak peace upon that home. Amen. I speak peace upon that marriage. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. You, oh, that lady, I don't know details of what has been making you to weep. You have been shedding tears in your heart. I pray for you. As the Lord lived before who we are, that matter is sorted out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever made you weep in the next 12 hours, it shall be turned to a testimony. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Five powerful amen. One, two, three, go. Amen. 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 So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you, may be seated. Let's give our free will offerings unto the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, tomorrow we are meeting at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Remember, uh, our white fasting is on. 
when you are breaking, no salt, no sugar, no pepper, no oil. You can take any other thing aside this. Hallelujah. And please, let us take at least one hour or 30 minutes, minimum 30 minutes or one hour tonight. Make sure, no matter how tired you are, make sure you spend some time tonight praying and asking God for power. Asking God for power. So we will meet at 6 a.m. by the grace of God tomorrow, Saturday, and 6 p.m. tomorrow. And on Sunday, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Sunday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Oh, as the Lord lived before whom we are, your testimony shall be undeniable. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give our free will offerings unto the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree the Lord God Almighty, as the Lord lived before whom we are, we pray, O oh God, as we give unto you, you will multiply it back unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And for everyone giving his or her tithe, the Lord will rebuke the devourers for your sake and enlarge your coast in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And cover your finances with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank in you, Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen please uh these messages are all there on facebook on youtube go back to them and then take the prayers listen to them again take the prayers pray them again and then uh share these messages with as many people as possible that the lord will help you to so we will meet again at 6 a.m and on the last day, usually when we do week of power like this, on the last day, we usually give special seed. So get your own on Sunday. We will give unto the Lord. We will sow a special seed for our, our week of power we do every three, three months. This is the last one for this year. The Lord God Almighty shall give us uncommon testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Father, we cover all that you have done today with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. We decree the Lord our testimonies are permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, when we meet again tomorrow morning at 6 Jehovah, Lord, let the heavens be opened in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love, the love of God, God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please, when you are joining tomorrow or when you are coming, make sure you invite at least five people if you are coming. And if you are joining, make sure you send the, list, the link to at least ten people. Let them join through our Facebook, our YouTube, or Zoom. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.